So what are they going to do to save us from ourselves now that we know that this irrefutable science has um, this irrefutable science is uh, here backing up all this legislation? Well, we've got our good friends Cap and Trade here. Hello, Cap. Hello, Trade. How are you today? Mm -hmm. Fine. Feeling that. Oh, Cap and Trade. <laughs> Prince money. Yeah. Cap and Trade, also known as Ha Ha, is Prince money. I'm sorry. That's a terrible joke. I'm very ashamed. <clears throat> and I'm about to quote Rolling Stone magazine, the greatest magazine ever to have been created, because of all the of all the press out there, this has posted the most accurate, most informative article on cap and trade that I have ever read, and it's from Rolling Stone magazine. Please look up Matt Tavii of Rolling Stone magazine um, and his cap and trade article. You should you should just look it up on Google. It's very easy to find. He writes. There will be limits for coal plants, utilities, natural gas distributors, and numerous other industries on the amount of carbon emissions, aka greenhouse gases, they can produce per year. If the companies go over their allotment, they will be able to buy allocations or credits from other companies that have managed to produce fewer emissions. So it's like it's a little like baseball cards only twisted. The idea is um, well, I've got a carbon credit rookie card, and I haven't used it by driving my car. Now you drive an SUV or your business has a fleet of SUVs. You can give me ten thousand dollars for this carbon credit rookie card with two thousand RBIs and three thousand and poo or whatever, and um, you can continue to drive those SUVs, and it will be offset by the fact that I don't drive any SUVs whatsoever. And um, President Obama conservatively estimates that about six hundred and forty-six billion dollars worth of carbon credits will be auctioned off in the first seven years. One of his top economic aides speculates that the real number might be twice, or even three times that amount, or possibly four or five since the value of the US dollar has gone to crap recently. <clears throat> so, what's the real motivation behind uh, the global warming scare? $646 billion is kind of a lot of money now that you think about it. Could buy, could buy myself a whole car with that kind of money. I mean, <laughs> Billion dollars here, billion dollars there. Pretty soon you're talking real money. So, um, who's going to be dealing out these carbon credits? Will we be buying these directly from the government? Will this be a tax on how much we produce? Actually, no. Surprisingly enough, you're not going to buy them from the government. You're going to buy them from an investment bank known as Goldman Sachs. You may remember them. They're one of the companies that Barack Obama bailed out when all the banks started going belly up. And you'll notice that Goldman Sachs is now one of the only ones in town. AIG went under. Um, Oh, what's the other one? I forget the name of it. That went under. Goldman Sachs Lehman is now Brothers. the... What? Lehman, Lehman Brothers? Yeah, Lehman Brothers. They went under. Goldman Sachs didn't. wonder why. Well, so we're going to buy our carbon credits from them, not the government. Uh, they're an investment bank. They spent $3.5 million to, climb, to lobby climate change issues. They've been pushing for cap and trade. Uh, they've donated an obscene amount of money to the Democratic Party. And, uh, which... Nine... $181,000 went to the Barack Obama campaign. And um, you know Mark Patterson and uh, Gary Geisner? Geisler? Yeah, they both used to work for Goldman Sachs. But but it's okay, Obama's Obama's changing things. He's not, he's no, nobody owns Obama but Obama, right? <laughs> uh, great. So, here are some pictures of the uh, executives of Goldman Sachs. This was the first image that came up on Google when I looked for them, and I just thought, yeah, I'll roll with it. So, um, the bank owns a 10% stake in carbon credits, which will be traded. Moreover, Goldman owns a minority stake in Blue Sources LLC, a Utah-based firm that sells carbon credits of the type that will be in great demand for the Little Passes. Nobel Peace Prize winner, Albert Gore, who is intimately involved in the planning of cap and trade, started a company called Generation Investment Management with uh, three former big from Goldman Sachs. Assistant Management, uh, David Blood, Mark Ferguson, Peter Hannes, those names should sound very familiar. Um, their business investing in carbon offsets and there's a $500 million green growth fund set up by uh, Goldman Sachs to invest in green tech. That's my next slide. Oh, So, what happens here? So, instead of our, us giving our money right to the government, we're just going to give it right to the banks and bail them out directly. Cut out the middleman, as it were. It's good. It's more efficient. And then, if you don't want to buy carbon credits, it's okay. You can lower your greenhouse emissions by buying green technology, like hybrids and 
refrigerators that don't work properly and the like. And oh wait, those companies, the companies that make those products, are now invested in by the investment bank Goldman Sachs. So they'll get your money if you buy the green tech to reduce your carbon offsets. And if you don't want to reduce your carbon credits, you can just buy offsets and give more money back to the bank anyway. So it's a win, 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 win situation for them. The only people that lose is us because we have to buy our products from one source. Ahem. And um, that's the that's generally the state of uh, global warming, as it were. Not really much else is going on. Every once in a while, a new bill will come out saying that you have to drive a hybrid. I know Boston for a while they had it for a year. All new taxis had to be hybrids and had to be factory white for some reason. I don't know. Um, but I'm done here. As you may know, reading can open up a rainbow of learning and opportunity for you, so I encourage you to read the following books. Unstoppable Global Warming by Fred Singer and, Ten and Dennis T. Avery. It's a fantastic book, and it is, um, accumul it is a uh, accumulation of um, several hundred peer-reviewed scientific works in which they take them and put them together to, post uh, to postulate the theory that um, Global warming is something that happens every 1,500 years where the Earth goes in a uh, warming, cooling cycle every so often. There's a movie, this isn't actually a book, so for those of you who are illiterate, or which I know is all of you at the John Birch Society, none of us can read, which is why we've got all the books for sale over there. For those of you who are too lazy to read, there's The Great Global Warming Swindle by Martin Durkin, a fantastic answer to um, Al Gore's movie, An Inconvenient Truth. The production values aren't nearly as good, and it doesn't have a Nobel Prize winner narrating it, but it's still worth watching. If you like thrillers and novels, there's State of Fear by Michael Crichton, which is um, Michael Crichton's fictional work in which he uses a great amount of real science to um, show why he stopped believing in man-made global warming. God bless Michael Crichton, may he rest in peace. Um, Patrick Moore, the co-founder of Greenpeace, wrote a book called Green Spirit, Trees Are the Answer, and it's actually not what you think. Patrick Moore has uh, since renounced his great long-haired, hippie, unshaved ways, and has come over to the side of enlightenment and reason, and now believes that the uh, environmentalist movement has been hijacked by anti-capitalists and um, socialist agendas, and he's written about that in the book Green Spirit Trees of the Answer. You can go to greenspirit.com and read all about, and read the book online for free there. I suggest you read um, Michael Crichton's website, which is Crichton Official, where he has uh, several good speeches about global warming, much better than mine, much more informative, lots of actual science, not boring at all. You should read them. Stephen, Ma Stephen McIntyre's Climate Audit, which he go every time a uh, new global warming paper gets published, he goes and he reads it and he shows why the science behind it is bunk. And the Johnston Archive, where a lot of good scientific files are archived, and I suggest you read them. I am all done here. Thank you for your time. I apologize for...